Happy Labor Day, everybody, and welcome back to Bleeding Cool's uh, weekly recap of Preacher Season 2. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at a uh, recap of Episode 11, uh, Backdoors. Uh, my overall takeaway is going to be pretty consistent. I feel like the last three episodes have all been just one big, long episode um, leading up to, I'm assuming, the confrontation with Jesse's family, but I'll get into that in a couple minutes. Um, but, yeah, I, my overall takeaway is just, I, I think when... You hear me go through spare parts, you'll see. Um, it seems like a continuation of themes. I don't think we're getting anything new. I think we're just seeing a strengthening of themes that I've been talking about the last couple of weeks. Again, I'm fine with that because I think we've seen some progression this week. Um, but again, going into what I'm expecting there to be a third season, uh, if we're going to be in New Orleans area, looking for things to expand even further. But for now, I was satisfied. Um, but again, we'll get to spare parts right now and we'll talk about a couple of things and you'll, you'll see what I mean. Uh, we're going to begin with uh, spare parts, as we said, with Jesse's family. Uh, the episode begins with a flashback to young Jesse, uh, who's been kept in a wooden box, uh, tortured by his, the Langel side of his family, uh, who are trying to get him to renounce the Custer name. They're also trying to get a lot more out of him. We're going to see that later on. But for now, we see a, a flashback to young Jesse and, and what is the road to his ultimate guilt. Uh, we then move on to Jesse and Tulip, who I, I think have probably the healthiest unhealthy relationship on television right now. Uh, but we get to see them in the swamp uh, as the truck is being pulled out. And even though Jesse has said there's no way he can get out, what a surprise. There is no the saint of killers in the back of that truck, even with all the water and everything else that's in there. Um, so the saint is out there somewhere. Are we going to find out where? I think we will by the end of this episode. Hairstar and Hoover. Um, and now I know we've talked a lot about Hairstar with regards to Featherstone and Hoover, and Hoover's kind of been, I think, the, the comedic foil, but Hoover, we get a sense, has been taking a little bit more of an important role in this episode. Um, the plan, we learn very quickly, is, <clears throat> excuse me, the plan for Hairstar is they're going to replace Humperdew because Humperdew is just a mistake. I mean, what is it referred to? The Messiah is a moron is, I think, what Hairstar best refers to him as. Um, it's to get rid of Humperdue, replace Humperdue with, with Jesse, and then Hairstar, um, whatever semblance of the Grail is left that's built around him and Jesse, will just start their own faith and religion and God business from there. It's just a matter, little, little small matter of getting Jesse on board, which is going to be even more problematic, as we see later on. Uh, but with Hoover, it's there's a comment that Hairstar makes where he says, let's pray it doesn't come down to you, and at first thought, you're thinking, oh, it was just another put down of Hoover. But we realize later on, no, it's it's an option no one wants to have to to, to, to exercise. Um, but we'll see, unfortunately, it does come to that. Um, but we'll see what he means by that uh, later on. Now we're going to go back to the uh, Jesse, Tulip, and Cassidy uh, conflict that's been going on. That essentially Tulip and Cassidy just feel like Jesse is on his own. He's doing his own thing. He doesn't care about what's going on with them. So they're not feeling really committed to him either. Um, there's a part where she says, what the hell did you lose, Jesse? What the hell did you lose? Um, which, again, I can understand where Tulip's coming from. But I think also it's a matter of Tulip and Cassidy not understanding what Jesse's going through. His loss of faith and loss of God represents an affront to his father's memory and everything that he was taught. And we see later on that Jesse's already having issues in regard to his father. Um, that's a big, big thing that comes into play. But again, without the three of them opening up and sharing, all of this, 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 these unknown factors are hurting the trio. And it's the reason why the Grail's been able to start picking them apart piece by piece. Jesse versus Cassidy, I thought that was very, very pointed. Um, where Cassidy was basically saying to Jesse, like, well, when all's said and done, he's kind of after you more than he is us. So if you're on your own, in a sense, you're kind of distracting him away from us. So why should we go with you? That was that was tough. That was a tough one. I, and then you could see that was a little bit of payback for Jesse turning down uh, Cassidy's request to help with Dennis. Um, God was, we learn very quickly through Jesse's realization, God was in that sex room. God was man dog. Um and right before his eyes could have sh shut this trip down dramatically, but of course that would have shortened the series. Um, but Jesse gets to that realization now, a realization that Tulip and Cassidy at this point really don't have too much interest in. OK, 
Okay, we flash to Hitler in hell. Um, Tyler and Eugene see the moment. Um, we get to see more of Hitler's um, personal hell. And we see there's a moment when communists come into the restaurant, when he has the opportunity to shoot one of the communists and take a stand, and he doesn't. And he hands the, the gun back to the communists. You know, when, later on in that scene, we see an instance where there's a Jewish man who's eating the last plum cake, and we see the look of hatred on, on, on Hitler's face. And But it's that's not the reason. That's the, the final straw in a series of what he thought were disrespects to him that just changed him. And there's a, there's a great quote. Um, that was the day, the last day that I was good. That was the moment I lost myself. And it, again, it's, it says a lot where you can start feeling for the character of Hitler. Not feeling for Hitler, let's be clear, but feeling for the character as portrayed in Seth Rogen's Preacher. Like, I feel like I have to do a disclaimer or something like that. It's weird. Um, but it's nice to see even after everything that's gone on in hell, Tyler's basically kicked his ass twice. Um, all it takes <laughs> basically is just Hitler screaming because I'm Adolf fucking Hitler to get everybody to take a step back, even Tyler. And Tyler, we didn't think of this point, was taking much respect to him in any way, shape, or form. Again, it's as, as a custodian of hell, as we learn, um, Hitler still has a little bit of pull and a little swag around there. We see, I guess, a meetup between, for lack of a better phrase, between Tulip and Cassidy as they're assessing everything that's been going on. Um, Dennis is observing, and Dennis makes reference to, to Cassie, the fact that Cassie is interested in Tulip. And Dennis says to him, so take her, it's what we do. And again, to emphasize the point for the last couple of weeks, Dennis is going to become a big problem. Because Dennis has embraced being a vampire, has no interest in going back to the human side. When you've been sick and suffering, why would you? Um, but Dennis is going to be a problem that Cassidy's going to have to deal with. Uh, Jesse and Hair Star. You know, Jesse asks Hair Star straight up, did you know that God was Man Dog? Hair Star, in a very non judgmental way, I, I appreciate the way he responded, which was big picture look at it from the perspective of somebody who's God. Um, can you imagine the stress that comes with being the master of all creation? It's a good point. Um, you're. You're going to see enough and do enough over time that you're going to have some very weird and interesting and kinky ways of burning off steam. No harm, no foul. Again, we do not judge. Um, the hair star starts to drive the point home more. This idea of, okay, Jesse, you, this is God. You're getting a sense of what God's about, what God's like. Is this really a God anybody would want to have come back? Like, why would you want to bring a god back who's done all this, who do, who's doing all of these things? Again, planting the seed of the whole, why bring it back an old god when we can have a bigger, better version 2.0 god? Right there with Jesse and Genesis. Uh, Tulip and Jenny Stone. You know, as we said, Cassidy and Tulip had the conversation. There was the side issue with Cassidy and Dennis. Tulip has decided she is going to take the guns and sabers that she found from the saint, and she's going to take and get them destroyed, and she's going to go with Jenny Stone in the process. Because Jenny Stone's her new friend. Jenny Stone's Tulip's new friend because Tulip, Cassidy, and Jesse can't get their crap together, and Tulip is tired, and she's beaten up mentally, and again, Jenny Stone has just been able to kind of ingratiate her way right into Tulip's life. Um, we find out that the weapons cannot be melted. We find this out after Jenny Stone proves her friendship by offering to blackmail the guy to actually do the job. We realize not only can the weapons not be melted, they don't even get hot. Um, there's a uh, an interesting situation that happens as this going as this is going along. Jenny Stone and Tulip continue to have a conversation about Tulip and Jesse's relationship, and Jenny Stone looking to continue to drive that wedge between them. Um, but we also start to see Tulip having a little bit of guilt over not joining Jesse and not being as committed to Jesse's quest for God um, as he would want her to be. She, Jenny Stone brings up the idea, I, I think almost on an assumption, that Jesse can sometimes be violent or be abusive. And I, I appreciated the fact that Tulip took care of addressing that right from the start. Like, no, no way, shape, or form. Even if, I, even if there were times where it could be said I gave him reasons, no, it never happened. And her quote is, you know, not even the time I cracked his skull uh, with a golf club. Um, so again, I, was, I thought that was a nice, like, look, we have our problems, we have our issues, but there's still this basic foundation between us um, that exists. And, and it, it, 
it gives the viewer hope. I'll say that it gives the viewer hope, and I think it makes things a little more difficult for Jenny Snow. I think she thought maybe she was getting a little more in between them than she was. Um, Jesse and Harris Star. We learned that apparently um, Heaven has an incredible voicemail system, so that all your prayers get saved. Uh, so Jesse gets a chance to listen to all of his prayers from the time he was little up until his most recent. And with that comes the opportunity to also hear every single one of your sins that you're asking for forgiveness for. And that is an intense toll for somebody like Jesse to pay. To have to sit there and listen to basically his entire life playback for him. More specifically, entire life of bad decision making playback before him. Hairstar presents him with at the start of the ultimatum about Jesse becoming a new god, where he says to him, if you want to save your soul, you have to do something big. And he says that in regards to the laundry list of things he says that Jesse's done in his life that he would need to atone for. So that, of course, becomes the segue in, because Hair Star, and I think I would say in the big picture was a mistake, plays the one prayer that hurts the most. And it is a prayer that Jesse made to God essentially after being tortured by his grandmother and the Langelles, where out of that box, finally, he calls himself Jesse Langell and says, thank you, God, for killing my father. The ultimate guilt that he feels, that his prayer to God, that his thanking of God, is what made the death of his father come about and made everything right, that somehow that was what was meant to happen. And we realize very quickly that is the ultimate guilt that Jesse's been dealing with this entire time. Why his father is so important, because he feels like he hasn't lived up to his father. Now, in regards to, yeah, this is the problem, though. Wrong time to bring that up on Hair Star's part and then ask Jesse to essentially replace God. It does not go well. Um, you've heard the expression when you, somebody tells somebody to show something up their ass. Imagine seeing that to somebody with reels and reels of tape and you have Genesis power. You can only imagine what's taking place at this point. Um, but it's just to show you where things are going. Um, we do. We are left with one final surprise. Uh, as I mentioned before, the, the Hoover option was mentioned in the beginning of the episode. And that wasn't forgotten about. Because even as uh, Hairstar, for lack of a better phrase, is getting his fill of all of those tapes... Um, He's calling Hoover and telling him that essentially, unfortunately, we have to go with the, 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 the ultimate DEF CON option. And we find out very quickly that the truck that was pulled out of the swamp in the beginning wasn't the original truck. That the Grail has the truck, and the Grail has brokered a deal with the Saint, and they're going to sick the Saint after Jesse, Cassidy, and Tulip. So that's essentially how we end the episode. I think they said before we have two episodes left. I'm not positive. Um, but I know you'll be watching this on Monday, so later tonight uh, we're going to be starting up a, a live blog for Preacher episode 12, which I believe is On Your Knees. Uh, we're going to be starting that. We show starts at 9 o'clock Eastern uh, Standard Time on AMC. We usually start up about an hour before, try and share some cool, interesting stuff with you guys that are Preacher-related. Um, so if you enjoy it. And also, don't forget, we're going to be putting word out about this, but I'll be doing a live blog of American Horror Story Cult starting on Tuesday, too. Um, thank you guys for joining me. Hope this worked out well and hope to see you guys with me live blogging tonight. Take care.